Hi everybody, Ali Akbarian, your resident road safety expert from Mobility Engineering, back again for another Q&A. Thank you very much for all those questions. Keep them coming, we love those questions and we'll keep uh, making you videos. And also, like I say, with that trusty subscribe pillow, please hit that subscribe button. We'd love your support. We're almost at that thousand subscribers. Uh, so yeah, uh, we've been talking about some cool things to get if we get that, so support us to get there. Maybe we'll get a subscribe shirt or something else funky. So, uh, so help us get there and we'll, we'll get something new. Okay. Okay, so today's question is all about the back seat of a car and converting seat belts to improve safety. So the question is, I have an old Kia Carnival. So a Kia Carnival is a pretty popular car in the uh, disability world. This one is an older one, so maybe about 10 years old. And the back seat has got a lap belt in the middle. So I want to just explain a little bit what that is. So let's pretend, uh, because we don't have a Kia Carnival here and it's a bit tight sometimes in the back of the car, so we'll pretend that this seat is the back seat of a you know, Kia Carnival or something similar, right? So you've got two seat belts that normally in those cars that come around from either side, right? This one is going two in the same directions. Sometimes you might have one coming from there and one coming from there, right? And then you also often have a middle lap strap or lap seatbelt. So if I sat in the middle here, again, we're using a bit of imagination because the seat would probably be a little bit bigger and you know in the back of a car, but we're just trying to show you what we're trying to explain. So I'm sitting in the middle here and I would have a lap belt because on the older cars, the previous generation of cars, and we're talking some of these people movers maybe 10 to 12 years ago, um, you have those lap belts in the middle, right? Now, the older cars within this disability industry, whilst in Australia the non-disability vehicles turn around every 10 years, disability vehicles tend to turn around every 20 years. So whilst you might be watching this, let's say as a therapist or something like that, you might go, I've never even seen these lap belts. Well, in the disability industry, there's more of them because people are using those older vehicles due to the you know, uh, turnaround time. So you have the uh, possibility of having this lap strap there and it would be in the center, either in the second row or the third row, right? So the question comes is, okay, I'm not really happy with the safety of this lap belt. Can I convert the lap belt to a lap and sash belt in this vehicle? And the question is, yes, but there is an asterisk. So yes, I will tell you what the asterisk is, and the asterisk is the money and the cost associated with it. So as a person who's been an automotive engineer for as long as I can remember, uh, I can tell you, as an engineer, anything's possible. We can design anything, we can create anything, and as long as it's all done correctly and safely for your vehicle, it's, it's able to be put in there and, and you know, uh, done and, and met all the requirements and all the rules and tested and so on. However, in order to do that, uh, particularly for a complicated setup like this, you could be looking five up to $10,000 to do something like that. Why? Because you're going to have to undo all of the structure of the seat, you're going to have to take all of these fabrics off, you're going to have to re weld things, you're going to have to build up a structure, then you're going to have to test it, you're going to have to draw it up, you're going to have to get people to verify it. There's lots of people involved just for a simple lap sash change. Very possible, uh, but generally speaking, uh, it's not that easy. There is another option, depending on your vehicle, which makes it slightly easier, and that is to actually have a post that sits on the floor that you can mount your lap sash seatbelt to. If you can do it that way, that's possible, but what that requires is that... That requires for me to have a completely empty space behind my, uh, behind my back seat. And like I said, we were using that Kia Carnival as the example, and the Kia Carnival has a middle row of seats and then a last row of seats. So the post can't be installed in that car that I'm talking about because in the middle row, you've got uh, people sitting behind the post so that they're not allowed to be, you know, head impact, big poles in the way, you're not allowed to do anything like that. And then in the back row, well, you don't have space because the back row is right against the back wall, back window and the door closes and you need space to build this kind of frame in this post. So in the example that I'm talking about, the post option is not an option, but it is a, a possibility in some vehicles like vans and things like that. The, the point we're trying to make with it is it's definitely possible. You can convert a lap only belt to a lap and sash belt. The only thing is, it's not just an easy, like, I'll go and buy a new belt and bolt it in. There's quite a lot of engineering structural work that needs to happen and modification that needs to happen so it can actually handle the strength required uh, by that lap sash seat belt. 
So hopefully that ha answers that question. Uh, like I said uh, before, we're also doing some of the old videos. So this is actually one of the old videos that we did uh, quite a few years ago, and we're just sort of refreshing it now based on the fact that it was very popular back then as well, uh, and making sure that it's still up to date. So thanks very much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button below, keep those questions coming, and we'll see you next time.